Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, we know that the president will be speaking about 3 o'clock, so we'll do this as quickly as we can today so you all can watch that. I do have a few things at the top. First, on Pakistan. The United States condemns, in the strongest terms, the attack on Saturday on a Sufi shrine in Balochistan that killed 52 innocent worshippers and wounded over 100 more. We extend our condolences to the victims and their families. Attacks like this only deepen our shared resolve to defeat terrorism and end the targeting of religious minorities. We stand with the people of Pakistan at this difficult hour and remain committed to supporting religious freedom. We'll continue to work with our partners in Pakistan and across the region to combat the threat of terrorism. In Afghanistan, we also strongly condemn the suicide attack on coalition personnel at Bagram Airfield this weekend that killed two, uh, two U.S. service members and two U.S. contractors and injured 16 other U.S. service members and one Polish soldier participating in the NATO mission. Our deepest sympathies go to the family and friends affected by this tragic loss. So we mourn their sacrifice. We reaffirm our commitment to protect the homeland and help our Afghan partners secure their country and their future. On Ghana, the United States is deeply disappointed by the targeting of the home and family of the primary opposition presidential candidate. We condemn all violence in Ghana, including political violence in the period leading to, during, and immediately following Ghana's elections scheduled for December 7th. Ghanaians from across the political spectrum have worked hard to build one of the leading democracies in Africa. We call on all Ghanaians to remain peaceful and respect the democratic process. We specifically call on candidates, their parties, and their supporters to reaffirm their pledges to renounce violence and settle any disputes through the judicial process. And finally, I believe you all saw the readout of Secretary Kerry's meetings today in Oman, where he met in Muscat with His Majesty Sultan Qaboos bin Saeed Al Saeed in Muscat. Secretary Kerry and the Sultan reaffirmed the enduring partnership between the United States and the Sultanate of Oman. Secretary expressed the United States' deep appreciation for the helpful role that Oman has played in securing the recent release of U.S. citizens held in Yemen. He also discussed with the Sultan the conflict in Yemen, the urgent need to find a durable political settlement to ease the suffering of the Yemeni people. I think also, as you know, the Secretary met with his counterpart, Minister responsible for Foreign Affairs, Yusuf Ben Alawi Ben Abdullah, where they discussed a range of regional issues of mutual concern, including the conflict in Yemen. Secretary travels to Abu Dhabi tomorrow to meet with the Crown Prince, and we'll have more on that tomorrow. And with that, Matt. Right. Uh, thanks. Let's start with um, any transition news that you might have. Um, has there been any contact yet? Um, if, if, do you have any idea when the president-elect's team will be showing up? So we have no updates from this weekend. Um, as we said on Friday, the department stands ready to help the transition team and support them um, as we move to a, Inauguration Day, but I have no updates. But does that mean that no, there hasn't been any contact? Correct. Okay. Um, does anyone have anything on that? Or? Well, from, uh, so, um, just to clarify, so no, nobody from the President-elect's office nor from the State Department has reached out? Correct. So what would normally happen with the State I Department? I think this is standard. You know, I think, I think at this stage um, we'll wait for the transition team. You know, certainly we're poised to help. We're poised to support with a range of administrative, logistical, briefing, information materials. You know, we would welcome that. Um, and as soon as I do have an update, I'll make sure you guys get it. Just to understand uh, clearly, how is the, what the, the, the secretary's activities, how, how do you brief the president-elect on what he's doing with U.S. foreign policy from the, from the State Department's perspective, not from the White House? Well, How I think we it? would back it up and we would take a look right. at, at the range of foreign policy issues. Um, we've spoken about this in previous right. transitions I mean, from the yeah. podium. You know, there's right. briefing books, there's oral materials coming in. Um, you know, so, so it really, it's something that the State Department is adaptable, looking at what the transition team would need. Uh, and we look forward to working with them. Uh, Elizabeth, on uh, Syria, uh, Secretary Kerry has uh, called uh, 
Uh, Minister Lavrov, today, do you have any readout for uh, this phone call? So I don't have much of a readout. I can confirm that the Secretary did speak to Foreign Minister Lavrov this morning, spoke about the situation um, in Aleppo. Um, they also re-emphasized the need for a political solution to the conflict in Syria. But beyond that, I have no, no details to offer. But it looks like the Syrian regime and the Russians are planning to invade uh, eastern uh, Aleppo soon. Uh, did they discuss this? Has the Secretary asked the uh, Russians to postpone this uh, military operation? So I know they discussed the situation in Aleppo in terms of what the regime or, or their Russian backers um, are planning on doing. I'd refer you to them to speak to their plans. But the Secretary did reemphasize again uh, that there's no military solution to the conflict in Syria. And are you concerned about such uh, an operation? Well, as we've said all along, we're deeply concerned about this situation in Aleppo. We're deeply concerned about the civilian toll that we're seeing there. You know, what we have said all along is that aid needs to go in, that there needs to be um, a period where we can get back to the political negotiations. Um, the Secretary, in his conversation with Foreign Minister L um, Lavrov, did emphasize the dire situation in Aleppo. Since, this whole, since the September 9th agreement collapsed, um, not too many days a, a, uh, after it was actually announced, uh, you guys have spoken about, and then and then the bilateral uh, bilateral contact, or at least in terms of a ceasefire, was broken. You guys have talked about how the teams are still meeting in Geneva. Which they continue. are including today. So exactly what have they done um, over the course of the last month and a half since the since the, 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 the bilateral US Russia thing broke down? You know, I'm not gonna detail the conversations that we're having in Geneva. What I would say, and I confirmed this this morning, is we continue to have conversations there in a multilateral setting, um, taking a look at the emphasis that we've placed on aid, that we've placed on Re-establishing a cessation of hostilities and the political transition. Can, you know, can, go can ahead. You, can I'm you, sorry. Well, I'm just wondering: can you point to uh, any kind of success that, the, that these talks that you continue to have have, ma have made? I mean, is I can't point to success, but I can point to the fact that we continue to think that they're valuable enough that we remain at the table. But they haven't, but they produce nothing then. Right? At, at this stage, we continue to engage. I don't have a just, result the, to point to, Matt. Right. No. I know. That I, and that's the issue here, because you guys have said, and actually everyone has said all the time, that, or everyone does say all the time, that there's no point in having talks for talk's sake. And frankly, if they've been meeting for a month and a half, and you can't point to a single thing that they've accomplished, I just wonder what the what, what what is the what what is the point of continuing this? It seems just like it's a it's a charade and an excuse yeah. for people to, you know, get a lot of expensive room service meals and um, and luxury hotels in in Switzerland. I think where we are very focused on is the fact that we go back to our fundamental principles where we've we've focused on on in the conflict in Syria, is that. There is no military solution. The only solution on this is going to be through a multilateral setting. Um, we are having these talks because we think it's important to have these talks. And we wouldn't continue to engage in these talks if we didn't think it was valuable. Again, I'm not in a okay, position well where I can unpack the specific strands of our work, where we've seen progress, where we don't see progress. But what I will say is that we're there, we're at the table, we're in Geneva, we continue can, to push. Okay, but can you, can you give one reason why you, why you think that they're, they're valuable? I think they're valuable because what's our other solution? Our other solution well, is a military good. solution, and the international community understands there is no military solution for the conflict in Syria. <clears throat> so what we do is we continue to engage every day, pushing for a political one. Well, I, they, they, that's a very odd way to describe that to ascribe value to something because I mean if they don't produce anything they're they're, they're not not produ productive we right? continue to believe it's valuable all right can we are we done on Syria hold on a few on Syria and then we'll move on we'll go to Saeed the Michelle I just want to you know the according to the Russian Foreign Ministry's readout of the meeting they're saying that uh, Mr. Lavrov raised uh, the fact that you 
refuse to separate the terrorists from the other groups and so on. And that is basically causing the problems in Eastern Aleppo. So I, I couldn't speak to the veracity of the Russian Foreign Ministry's readout on that. What I would say is what we've said all along is we do understand this is a problem. We've talked about the marbleization right. on that. We've talked about our efforts to pull those groups apart that continue. So what are you doing in terms of uh, basically pulling them apart from one another, to use your you know, words. It's a, this is something that we've spoken about for weeks and weeks, Saeed. We mm -hmm. continue to have conversations with the groups on the ground. We've also said how difficult mm -hmm. it will be when these these groups are under constant bombardment, mm -hmm. you know, and this is, this is um, a situation where it's very difficult mm -hmm. for them to pull apart. When they're under threat, they're under attack. Mm -hmm. um, we believe it's important. You know, our view on Nusra and certainly Daesh have not changed. Mm -hmm. So now with, apparently there is a decision to target Al-Qaeda affiliated groups and so on in Eastern uh, Aleppo. That would really include many of the groups under that uh, umbrella, correct? I mean, including some of the groups that you may have supported in the past. Well, we've spoken about who's included in the cessation of hostilities, um, the one that was put in place earlier this year. You know, Nusra, Daesh have always been excluded under that. Yes, Elizabeth, you, you were saying that there is no military solution, but Russia and the Syrian regime are talking about a military solution in eastern Aleppo, and uh, it looks like the uh, military offensive on eastern Aleppo is imminent. You know, we continue to believe that attacks like this just push the country further into chaos. They, they continue to push the country farther from the goal of a nonviolent solution. Leslie? Um, also, in Syria, do you, in, uh, following up what Matt was, was saying, do you really believe that there can be progress made in the next two months, or is it really just a situation no, of we do. maintaining we'll... the situation as it is no. until a handover? I mean, it's a difficult it is. situation to be in where, I mean, what progress can one make in, in, two, in two months when you We got believe a new it's valuable to be at the table, to continue to explore. Um, all opportunities that will alleviate the suffering of the Syrian people and to create that space for a political dialogue. We work at this every single day. Can I ask, um, has um, the President-elect's transition team in any way, um, st I know he's getting daily um, security briefings, but have they in any way joined um, or been briefed on this situation? I would refer you to the President-elect's transition team okay. on that, Leslie. Can I stay, stay in the region, but sure. um, move uh, south a little bit to Bahrain? Of course. Um, you, you will have seen, I believe, that um, this secular um, <coughs> leader has been arrested after giving an interview, or for giving an interview, uh, about Prince Charles's visit to, to Bahrain, and I'm wondering if you have anything I think to you're say talking about, about Ibrahim Sharif. Sharif, yeah. yes. We are aware of media reports actually, that Ibrahim Sharif, the former leader of the opposition um, WAD political society, has been questioned and charged over comments he actually made in an AP article. Uh, we're following the case closely. Um, as we've said below, before, we believe that no one anywhere should be prosecuted or imprisoned for engaging in freedom of expression, even when that expression is critical. Any charges against Sharif on that basis should be dropped. Thanks. Do you know, I'm just uh, do you do you know if his if you've raised this case directly with the Bahrainis? We have we have raised the case of Ibrahim Sharif and other human rights um, separately directly with the Bahrainis. Okay, so this just I mean this just kind of happened over the weekend. Yes. So, but since his since he was detained, you it have. It is my raised, understanding. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Do you um, a reaction to the Colombians, uh, the Colombian government publishing a revised peace accord. I you, think you I think you saw our statement from the secretary this weekend. I actually didn't, but it was let me let me recap that statement <laughs> for you. So the secretary actually spoke to this this weekend. Uh, we congratulate Colombia on achieving a revised peace accord and we continue to support efforts by President Santos and the Colombian people to pursue a just and lasting peace, the peace that Colombia deserves. Um, the United States has supported Colombia in conflict. We will continue to be a strong partner in peace. And then on Venezuela, you yes. didn't put out a statement on that. We did not. So um, uh, the discussions, the second round of peace talk of talks um, on Venezuela. Um, when uh, Tom Shannon was here, he was pushing 
um, for the release of prisoners mm -hmm. um, and said that was the most significant thing that everybody's watching for um, as they moved into the talks. Obviously, I didn't see anything of that happen. So um, do you continue to do that? Do you think it's on the way? How did you think the second round went? So I, I characterize it this way. It's, you know, we're pleased to hear that reports from uh, the Venezuelan government and the political opposition that they've made some progress in their dialogue. Uh, we understand the dialogue continues. We hope it will continue to bear fruit in the coming days. Um, as we've said before, and I believe the Under Secretary addressed this, is that Venezuela needs a good faith and productive effort to end its political impasse and to address the urgent challenges facing the Venezuelan people. You know, we continue to work with our partners in the region through the Organization of American States to support the dialogue. Nike, I'll get you said. A quick follow up on Colombia. Uh, sure. What is the U.S. position on the uh, referendum of the revised uh, peace accord with the United States support? Sure. How the revised accord is submitted for approval is really up to the Colombian government to decide. If so I you, may, can oh, I? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, of course. One quick question on South Sudan. Yeah. Um, a United USAID funded uh, radio station, I Radio, mm -hmm. was shut down last Friday by the government. Mm -hmm. Uh, do you have, first, do you have anything on that? What does that say about I it? I do, and thank you for the question. We are aware that South Sudanese authorities recently shut down iRadio. Uh, we note this follows the closure of other media outlets. Such actions send the wrong message to the people of South Sudan, who are guaranteed the right of freedom of information and expression by their own laws and constitution. As we've said many times, a society that's free, vibrant, and successful depends on the unrestricted flow of information and ideas through a free and independent press. We understand iRadio and South Sudanese authorities are engaged in talks right now to restoring um, iRadio and allowing it to reopen. We're also raising it directly with our counterparts in Juba. Thank you. Great. Saeed. Can I go to the Palestinian and Israeli? Of course. Very quickly. Uh, yesterday, the Israel Ministerial Committee for legislation unanimously approved a law uh, to retroactively you know, legalize the, 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 the legal outpost. Do you have any comment on that? I do. I've got quite a bit to say on that, right, so, right. so give me a second. Please. We're deeply concerned mm -hmm. about the advancement of legislation that would allow for the legalization of illegal Israeli outposts located on private Palestinian land. Israel's own Attorney General has reportedly expressed serious concerns about the constitutionality of the proposed legislation. If this law were enacted, it could pave the way for the legalization of dozens of illegal outposts deep in the West Bank. This would represent an unprecedented and troubling step that's inconsistent with prior Israeli legal opinion and also break long-standing Israeli policy of not building on private Palestinian land. Our policy, as you know, on settlements is clear. We believe they are corrosive to the cause of peace. This legislation would be a dramatic advancement of the settlement enterprise, which is already gravely endangering the prospects for a two-state solution. This only makes clear the choice Israel faces between building more settlements and preserving the possibility of peace. Um, I would note we understand this legisla legislation has several more steps to go before it's passed. We hope it does not become law. Mm -hmm. Now, the logical follow-up now, if they go ahead and, and do uh, this, will will you, you know, before this administration, before departing, will they do anything or they are not likely to do anything? So that's Let's, a hypothetical. So the, I'm not going to get in there. Well, Obviously, okay. we very made very clear okay. our, our position okay. on this okay. proposed so, legislation. Independent of the uh, incoming administration, uh, are you likely to do something uh, tangible if they move ahead and, and implementing? <coughs> you know, again, I'm not going to speak to this. We've made our position very clear on this. Uh. Um, Let's see where that goes. Okay, I have a couple more. If of you course. Indulge me. I also, uh, a couple of days ago, the Israelis, uh, you know, the, they made a Palestinian family of 12 or a number of families demolish their own homes in East Jerusalem. I wonder if you have any comment on that. We've spoken before to right. to this it's, practice of demolition. Right. We right. believe that any actions like that that raise tensions are counterproductive to peace. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, can I just add of course. Your, your comment on the draft law. Mm -hmm. 
you referred to the settlement enterprise. Mm -hmm. The idea of, of settlements, um, new settlements, the retroactive legalization of existing illegal settlements, so settlements taken as a whole. Right, but I mean, settlement enterprise suggests that it's... Should I say so, settlement issue? Well, That's I don't, probably better. I, 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 don't know what you, yeah. I don't know what you mean by enterprise. I would say the issue of settlements. It's a, it's a good clarification. Um, can can we go back and find out if because uh, sure. I mean if the administration believes that settlements are a quote unquote enterprise that is that suggests that it's I'll, got, I'll check I think I think what we meant is the issue of settlements writ large. Um, okay, and then uh, nearby um, Siri, just a, in, in, over the weekend you may have seen some photographs that appeared on Twitter and other social media that appeared to show some U.S. tanks being in a parade, a Hezbollah parade in Holmes. Do you know anything about that? So, you know, I saw the social media reports, very grainy photographs. I have no information on it. I will note that we're working with our interagency counterparts to find out more information and, and get some clarity on it. Well, if, and I, I, I realize you, you will be able to dodge this by saying it's a hypothetical, but I it love it when you set me up. But like it that. should well, but it shouldn't really be yeah. a hypothetical. I mean, if it turns out that these were tanks that were sold to the Lebanese armed forces, and then ended up in Hezbollah's hands, wouldn't that be some kind? Of, wouldn't that violate some kind of? Uh, well, Hezbollah is a foreign law. terrorist organization. Yeah, so wouldn't, so wouldn't uh, it violate some kind You know, of, why don't I look for granularity, get some clarity on this? I, I'm, I'm I, not, I, I, I don't want to speak. I'm not interested in, 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 I mean, I am interested, but I but I think this is a question that can be answered without you knowing definitively whether these Obviously, we would be gravely some, concerned if equipment hand, ended up in the hands of Hezbollah. The equipment that you sold or gave to the Lebanese armed To forces. whomever. But, you know, there was a precedent for this. It happened in the middle 70s. I mean, you know, the Lebanese army basically broke up and everybody went to his own group. So you know, again, what we're so looking at is sort of a Twitter feed with some grainy photos. As I said, we're trying to look for clarity on this. Right. Is As I have more information, either we can discount it or we have more, I'll definitely come back. How to urgently that. are you Very looking much. into this? Okay. Leslie? Okay, Matt. Nope, thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you.